Oh, sorry, Smitty. I tried not to wake oh, you up. Hi, Jake. How you doing? Uh, you okay. Must be exhausted. Yeah. Well, I wasted the whole day going all over town hunting for the Admiral Bird and never did find him. Yeah, I, I'm a little exhausted. Oh, I boy. just sat down here and thought I'd take a little short nap. Oh, well, I'll leave you to your nap, okay? I'm going to go in and get some water. Okay, okay Jake. Bye-bye. Bye. <clears throat> Your hat. Huh? Your hat. Oh, well, you look at that. It looks like some bird was pulling the straw out of your hat to make a nest. Oh, well, for pity. I bet you that's who it was, Smitty. I bet you it was him who was pulling the straw. Well, what do you think of that? I spend the whole day looking for that bird, then when I sit down to take a nap, he makes a nest out of my hat. <laughs> hey, Jake. Yes, Minnie? You know what? What? That's the last straw. Oh, Smitty. <laughs> 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 oh. In a far kingdom long ago, there lived a poor miller whose greatest treasure was his only daughter. The miller was proud of her beauty. And she was as wise as she was beautiful. The miller could not help boasting about his daughter. And one day he told the king that his daughter could spin gold out of straw. It was well known that the king loved gold. And when he heard the miller's boast, he ordered the girl to be brought before him. Directly the miller's daughter arrived at court, the king led her to a room stuck full with straw from floor to ceiling. All this straw must be spun into gold before morning as you value your life, the king commanded sternly. The miller's daughter knew it was a hopeless task. <laughs> as she sat lamenting, a voice said, Good day to you. What are you weeping for? And there stood a tiny little man. Alas! She replied, I must spin all this straw into gold. And I do not know how. What will you give me to do it for you? My necklace, replied the maiden. The little man agreed and sat himself down at the wheel. By the morning, the work was done and the gold was spun. When the king saw what had been done, he was very pleased. But he was greedy and wanted still more gold. And he led the poor miller's daughter to a bigger room and commanded once again that all the straw be spun into gold by morning. The miller's daughter sat down to weep. And again, the little old man came to ask her, What will you give me to do your task? The ring on my finger, she replied. So her little friend began to work. In the morning, all was finished. There was more gold than before. The king was delighted to see all this glittering treasure. But still he was not satisfied and took the miller's daughter to an even bigger room and said, All this must be spun tonight. And if you succeed, you shall be my queen. 
As soon as she was alone, the dwarf said, What will you give me to spin gold for you this third time? I have nothing left, said she. Then promise me your first child when you are queen. That may never be, thought the miller's daughter. But as she knew no other way to get her task done, she promised him what he asked. Once more, the little man spun the whole heap of straw to gold and quietly went away. When the king came in the morning, he found all the gold he desired. He married the miller's daughter and made her his queen. There was great rejoicing at the birth of the first royal child and no one was more happy than the queen. By this time, she had forgotten the little man and her promise. Until one day, he came and reminded her of it. The queen was deeply grieved, and she offered the little man all the treasures of her kingdom rather than part with her baby. But in vain, for the little man held her to her promise. At last, her tears softened him, and he said, I will give you three days' grace, and if during that time you tell me my name, you shall keep your child. The queen dispatched messengers all over the land to find out new names, and she lay awake all night. The next day, the little man came. And she began with all the long names she could remember. Um, Timothy, Benjamin, Jeremiah. But to all of them, he said, That's not my name. The queen lay awake all night again thinking of names. The second day, she began with all the odd names she could think of. Bandy legs, crookshanks, and so on. But the little man still said to every one of them, that's not my name. For the third time, the queen lay awake, and messengers were sent far and wide to search for the right name, but none succeeded until one of them heard. Merrily I dance and sing, tomorrow will a baby bring. Merrily I sing and shout the name the queen cannot find out. Rumpelstiltskin! The queen was overjoyed at the news, and when her little visitor asked, Now, lady, what is my name? She said, Um, is it uh, Tom? Dick? Harry? Can your name be Rumpelstiltskin? Some witch told you that, said the little man, and he stamped his feet so hard that he stamped right through the floor in his rage at having all his troubles for nothing. Walida. And my mommy just had a baby. Now I'm not the baby anymore. My brother Aaron was the baby before I came. And my sister Aisha was all by herself before my brother came. My new sister's name is Hadia. That means a gift. My mommy and daddy said that we're the best gifts they ever had. I help my mommy take care of the baby. I'm a big girl. My big sister, Aisha, can change Hadia's diaper. Aaron tells Hadia stories about kings and queens in a beautiful land. I sing songs for Hadia. Sometimes she sings with me. Ring around a rosy, pocket full of posy, hash up, hash up, we all fall down. Mommy and Daddy said they're proud of us for being so helpful with our new little gift. But sometimes I miss sitting in my mommy's lap. I don't sit in mommy's lap as much as I used to because Hadia needs to sit there more than I do. 
After all, she is a baby. So now I sit in Daddy's lap, and he tells me stories just like the ones Aaron tells Hadia. And then I sing for Dad just like I sing for Hadia. And sometimes Dad sings with me. A few times, Mommy let Hadia sit in my lap. My lap is not as big as Mommy's. So, Hadia can't stay there very long. I can feed myself, but Mommy feeds Hadia. My little sister Hadia has so much to learn. Since I'm her big sister, I guess it's up to me to teach her. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Roll a roll a roll a man, put it in the pan. Put it in the oven and bake a cake for me and my mom. Plus, old pal. <sighs> Hello, hand. How are you tonight? Did you have a good day today? Hmm? Minus, what are you doing? I'm looking at my hand. I love looking at my hand before I go to sleep. Well, look at your hand quietly. I'm trying to get some sleep. Okay. You sure did a lot of fun things today, Hand. You held a kite. You played marbles. You built mud pies. You tickled cocoa. <laughs> and, and you must have tagged a plus at least a hundred times. Shh. Oh, you sure are a wonderful, Hand. Would you like to play the eagle game with me? Let's make believe you're a giant eagle flying high in the sky. It's a starry night, and you're flying so high you can almost touch the moon. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I don't believe this. Whoosh, whoosh. Oh, look. Look what's here. Here comes the giant owl. Hoot, hoot. The giant eagle and the giant owl fly to the moon together. Whoosh, whoosh. That does it! I can't take it anymore! Here I am trying to get some sleep and you're talking to your hands! Oh, but it's fun making believe your hands are eagles and owls! Minus sleep! Okay, okay! As soon as I'm done playing! Hey, Plus, did you ever make believe your hand was a pirate ship sailing over the ocean blue? Ahoy there, you land lover! Hoist thy sail and prepare thy planks. I be coming aboard. Aurelia! Aurelia! Shiver, shiver, what is it, love? I'm trying to sleep and Minus is talking to his hand. First he says good night to his hand. Then he makes believe his hand is a giant eagle. Then he makes believe his hand is a giant hoot owl. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Now he's making believe that his hand is a pirate boat. And I want to go to sleep. Treasure. It's time to go to sleep. Stop talking to your hands. Good night, boys. Good night, Aurelia. Now you heard Aurelia, Minus. No more talking to your hands. Good night, Plus. Mm, good night, Minus. <sighs> Psst. Hello, Feet. This is Minus. How are you tonight? Oh, no. Did you have a good day today? You did a lot of fun things. Ran to the store. Keep the ball. <laughs>
back after these messages. This weekend, Nickelodeon specially delivers to you a holiday adventure with Santa. If you travel to a certain spot, roughly 10 miles from the North Pole, you'd come to my house. That's me, handsome fella, hey? It was Christmas Eve, which is the busiest night of the year for me and my helpers. And a little boy called Sam was to have a Christmas he'd never forget. Santa's Pocket Watch, Saturday at 2.30, 1.30 Central on Nickelodeon. There's a thousand tales in this town, but the toughest tales attached to Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse, he's a mouse, not a man, get me? With a snap for action that won't quit, and a half-pint sidekick with a gallon of gumption. Someday, they'll build the better mouse trap. For now, they've got the better mouse, Danger Mouse. You've been watching too many films about secret agents. On Nickelodeon. My name is Teddy Ruxpin. I want you to meet my friends. <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin's friends are found only in the world of Teddy Ruxpin's storybook cassettes. I said in the storybook cassettes. Butter's gone. Whoppers! Gone crazy with chips. Got all rolled up and crisp. Peanut butter boppers. It's creamy peanut butter, a crispy coating, and a whole lot more. Peanut butter boppers. Now with two new cookie coatings. Fudge Graham and Chocolatey Cookie Crunch. What a snack! Reason number three to watch the monkeys on Nickelodeon, Davy. Davy, another great reason to watch the monkeys on Nickelodeon. Heart to heart bear, he really cares. You can tell by the beat of his heart. Whenever you hug him, you feel his heart beating. Heart to heart bear will be there when you need him. Heart to heart bear. Heart to heart bear, you can feel his heart really beat. Comes ready for bed in his own pajamas. Heart to heart bear. By Cho Sun. You are watching Nickelodeon. And now back to Pinwheel. This is Simon, and he loves to draw things. After reading a book about soldiers, he drew some soldiers on his blackboard. But once he'd drawn them, he forgot all about them. He had other things on his mind. Next day was his music lesson. He played the triangle in the school orchestra. As he packed, he gave a sigh. I wish I played another instrument. I always feel so babyish playing a triangle. On his way to school, he met his friend from the land of chalk drawings. Henry had an urgent request for Simon. You must come back with me now. Something has happened in the land of chalk drawings. Simon agreed to go. He enjoyed visiting the land of chalk drawings. He didn't realize a shock was in store for him when he arrived. Come on, come on. Oh. Oh, the, there's nobody here. 
the land of chalk drawings is deserted. Henry corrected him. There is someone. Look, over there. Look. Simon looked and gasped with surprise. Why, those are the soldiers I drew yesterday on my blackboard. And they're making everyone do military drill. Simon was right. The fierce sergeant was shouting orders to all the other figures. To the dog, the birds, and the children, even the flowers and the sun. Simon was so busy watching that he didn't see the sentry creep up soldiers' rifles all stacked up. Simon had an idea. When the sentry wasn't looking, he took his piece of chalk and quickly changed all the rifles into musical instruments. At that moment, the soldiers came over looking for their rifles. Well, you can imagine how surprised they were to find their rifles had gone. Instead, they picked up trumpets, drums, cymbals, and the sergeant had a huge euphonium. The soldiers tried them out. At first, the noise was terrible. Gradually, the soldiers improved. And soon, they were marching round the ground in a grand parade, the like of which had never been seen in the land of chalk drawings. Simon took his chalk and drew a bandstand. And everyone in the land of chalk drawings admired Simon as he conducted the band. But soon it was time for Simon to leave for school. The band led the way. Waving goodbye, Simon headed for school. And he thought, Hmm, playing a triangle in the school orchestra doesn't seem so bad now. And after all, I'm a real musician. I've just conducted a band. And Simon hurried on, humming the tune that the band had played. Hello, everybody. It's time once again for your favorite guessing game. Name that sound. <laughs> This is the game where you folks at home play along with us here in the studio for no prizes. Is everybody ready? Then what are we waiting for? It's time to play Name That Sound! Today's mystery sounds will all be musical instruments. Coco will play an instrument and you folks will have to guess what it is. And here's our first instrument. Very good, Coco. Now, who can tell me the name of the instrument Coco just played? A piano! Right, a piano! And now, here's the next mystery instrument sound. Who can tell me the name of the musical instrument that Coco is playing now? A trombone! Very good! A trombone! Okay, here's another musical instrument sound. Are you ready to name that sound? A drum! Very good, a drum! Do you have any more musical instruments for us, Coco? That's very good, Coco. Can you tell me what instrument Coco is playing now? A violin! That's absolutely correct. 
Very good. Thank you very much, Coco, and thank you, folks at home, for playing Name That Sound. Teachers take care of us and show us all kinds of things to do. Sometimes we learn to try things that we never did before. wonderful things we can do with our bodies.
Mrs. Holly, can we dance with the streamers? Lots of people, huh? Uh, but Coco, I think there's something wrong here. Look at what you're wearing. Are those the right clothes to wear to a piano recital? That's what you wear to a piano recital. You look fine, Coco.
I don't know. What do you want to do, Minus? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Well, we did what you want to do yesterday. Oh, I know. What? Let's go to our room and play. I got you last. That's a good idea. I'll race you there. <laughs> got you last. I got you last. <laughs> My nose smells rain. And the mole's nose is never wrong. <laughs> oh, hi, Kim. Oh, hi, Molly. Oh, you know, I was going to take a stroll in the garden and look for some good, delicious worms. But I'll climb down to my nice, cozy underground kitchen and make a pot of root tea. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Oh, and I'll listen to the rain on my roof. Yeah, I'd better get this painting indoors before it gets all wet. Good idea. Bye, Molly. Bye, Kim. Silas. Kim. It looks like it's going to rain any minute now. Yep, isn't that wonderful? You'd better come indoors with me or your beautiful shell will get all wet. Well, of course my shell is going to get all wet. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm going to take a snail bath. A snail bath? Sure. I love the rain. Gives me a chance to shine up my shell. Oh, I've got okay. my snail soap already. You okay. see, this here is snail soap. Makes a lot of long-lasting bubbles. Oh, right, Simon. You know, a snail can't climb into a bathtub like the rest of you folks. On a rainy day, the whole garden is my bathtub. Simon, it's gonna rain. Oh, come on, raindrops. I'm waiting for you. Nothing like a little rain to wash away all that garden dirt that sticks to my shell during the long walks. Bye, Whoops, Simon. I just felt a raindrop on my nose. Kim, you better hurry up and get inside. You're gonna get all wet. That's what I been saying, Silas. Have a good bath. I must admit, and I can't complain, when I'm sitting here and it starts to rain, it cleans the dust from that window pane and my shell. It's a 
shower for a flower, a bath for a bee, a wash for a squash, and a drink for a tree. And the thing that really pleases me is the smell. Smell! And when I hear that pitter-patter, pitter-patter, oh look, I, I see those raindrops getting fatter. <laughs> I know that sometimes when it's gone, it leaves a rainbow hanging on. So if you're looking to the sky and a drop of rain plops <laughs> in your eye, don't be surprised. There's a reason why it fell. Yeah. And it's all for the flower, the bee, the squash, the tree, and me. Who's enjoying the smell? <laughs> <laughs> it smells like fun! Yeah, I'm gonna go take a bath, Minus. I'll see you later. Hey, wait for me! Yep, scrub my own bath. Well, just call me Soapy Snail. <laughs> yeah. It's me, Emily. Your little friend as nice as can be. You can always tell that it's me Cause I always wear red, you see Red dress, red dress, red hat Red shirt, red shirt, green We're your friends and you have seen Big brother Stephen and little sister Pat and my little hedgehog and free Who share my adventures with me Yippee It's raining Emily looks out of the living room window at the rain Which goes on and on She looks at Pat Who's playing with her building blocks It's still raining She goes up to her room picks up her doll, brushes her hair, undresses her, then puts different clothes on her, puts her back to bed, goes back to the window. Still pouring with rain. I'll go and see Stephen. Yes, Emily? I'm bored. So am I. I'd like to play in the garden, but it won't stop raining. What can we do? I don't know. It's still raining. I don't know what we can do. Maybe we could go to the attic. It's full of interesting things. They may be big monsters, too. Of course not, silly. Come on. It'll be fun. They go out of the room, and we find them again at the attic. Are you sure there aren't any monsters? Of course there aren't. Come on. Oh, look, Stephen. There's someone here already. Where? I can't see anything. Yes, there. Down there. Look. Oh, Ninny. It's us. Look, there's a mirror. <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> Come on, let's go in. Oh, look, Emily, a lovely old chest. Let's see what's in it. Maybe treasure. Stephen carefully opens the lid of the chest and finds a lot of old family photographs. Photos? Oh, look. <laughs> look at that one. <laughs> and that one. Look. Look, Emily, that's you when you were little. <laughs> Here's another one. That's Mum and Dad. They do look funny with those clothes on. Suddenly a noise makes Emily jump. Did you hear that? No. What's the matter? I heard a noise. It came from over there. I didn't hear anything. He goes on rummaging in the chest and takes out another photograph. Look at that one. It looks like Dad dressed up as a soldier. A noise louder than the first one makes them Where's both the jump. Ghost? Don't be silly. Ghosts are all white. It must be a pirate with a big hat. 
What will I do to us? I don't know. Maybe it's Captain Hook. Gazing with wide, frightened eyes oh, at the oh end my. of the attic, <laughs> they see a big shadow wearing a wide hat. Oh, well, there you are. You see? There's your ghost. <laughs> your pirate either. Isn't he sweet? Let's go and show him to Pat and Humphrey. <laughs> Stephen and Emily put the little cat down in front of Pat. Look, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he cute? No, he's taking a great fancy to Pat. Hey, look, there's Coco. She loves to watch her shadow. She likes to make it dance. Back there behind her shoulder, watch it wiggle, watch it prance. When she makes a funny motion or takes a silly pose, her shadow always follows, her shadow always knows. Her shadow's always with her. Along the floor and wall, it sometimes gets quite tiny and sometimes stretches tall. She pretends to bat a baseball or pretends to throw a lance. Her shadow does it with her. It needs no second chance. Her shadow sneezes with her it jumps and wobbles, too. Her shadow tumbles with her. It always takes her cue. Her shadow takes its shoe off when she takes off her shoe. And it likes to put a hat on. It does what shadows do. Oh, she loves to lead her shadow. She thinks that it's just right. It stays and plays the day through and goes away at night. after these messages.